Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Shannon, I'm a pet portrait and wildlife artist and I specialise in coloured pencils. So if you'd like to learn to draw in coloured pencils then hopefully you're on the right channel. Um, today I'm going to show you how to draw a dog from start to finish, the whole face, but I will be doing this in parts, it will be a series. So this will be part one and we'll be going over how to draw the eyes and then each video after that will include a different focused section of the face, whether it's the dog's nose, the mouth, the ears, the fur that's in between. Um, and I'll be going over everything, how to draw it in detail so you can draw a full pet portrait. So all of the materials that I'll be using will be linked below including the coloured pencils, the paper, the reference photo and if you'd like I've, I will do um, a line drawing so that you don't have to draw the outline yourself. So without further ado let's get started. Okay so let's begin with the first part in this tutorial. So as I said earlier the line drawing will be available in the description box to download and I am doing this portrait A4 so that when you print out the line drawing you can just print it out on a piece of printer paper and then use some tracing paper like this and all you need to do is trace it on one side, flip it over, draw over it again on the other side and then onto your piece of drawing paper just trace the whole thing again and you'll be ready to go like this. The paper that I'm using for this tutorial is Fabriano Artistico in Brilliant White and it's the hot press watercolour paper in the 640, 640 GSM. Um, you can get a lighter weight version of this paper, it's a bit cheaper but I do prefer the heavier one because you can get a few more layers on it. The coloured pencils that I'll be using will mostly be the Faber-Castell Polychromos but I might have to use a few luminants here and there in this series just because they don't do every shade that you can get in the polychromos and um, so I'll let you know if I do have to use some of those. To achieve the really sharp point on the pencil it's important um, to get that detail. I use the Derwin manual super point sharpener uh, but any sharpener that gives like a really sharp point is absolutely fine. And the picture that I chose for this series is of a Labrador Retriever. Um, it's a stock photo of, and I got it from Pixabay, so you can easily get hold of it. Um, I liked this picture because it's really clear, um, it's got the mouth open, and you can see the tongue and the teeth as well. Um, and it's also got a few whiskers, and it's wearing a collar, so there's a bit of everything going on in there, which is good. Can try lots of different techniques out and so yes the first step for this tutorial will be to start drawing the eyes so let's get started I always start with the eyes first because I feel like when you're doing a pet portrait the eyes are like the most important feature if you want to capture likeness if the eyes don't look right then I feel like the whole portrait will look off so it's definitely the best place to begin in my opinion so the first thing that we're going to do is use dark sepia and I like to use this to just outline the eyes a little bit just to create a nice frame to start putting the colour into. So I'm just going to start with the right eye. I always do this, don't know why. Um, and I'm just going to start adding dark sepia to the outer parts. Let me know if you like this format of tutorial rather than like the voiceover and the speeding up. If you prefer it in real time. I do press on quite hard for this bit so that it makes like a nice dark colour. Then 
then as it is very dark on the picture here I'm just gonna color it in leaving that white bit there white just because it looks like there's a little highlight which goes in a little line around the eye actually I'm just gonna use my little eraser thing to just um, rub out the pencil line make it a bit clearer I do like to rub the pencil lines out as I go, it just makes it all cleaner and you don't end up with muddy colours. I'll link this eraser in the description as well. Just do this corner. <sighs> Leaving a tiny gap here for that highlight that you can see. And just there we go. Right. There is like a, a greeny tinge to the eye, I think it's the reflection of the grass and then there's the blue bit at the top which is the sky. So I'm just going to use um, this warm grey too and I'll just rub out. Sometimes I do like to leave like a really really faint pencil line that you can hardly see just so that you can tell where the colour needs to go. <sighs> so I'm just gonna do put down a base layer of warm grey too just where you can see those reflections underneath that blue bit in the eye. As the green is quite like a warm green, I think this is just a nice base to put under it. Because if you put a darker pencil down too soon, it can go a bit patchy and weird. So I'll just start with that. And then I'm gonna use Dark Sepia again, actually. I'll use Payne's Grey because it looks like it's a bit more blue toned um, for this little dark section here. Because this is in real time, I think it's a, a better depiction of the process of how I do a pet portrait. When it's a time lapse, I think it looks like it's pretty straightforward, but actually there's a lot of trial and error and testing out the colours and going over it with different colours. So you can sort of see my thought process a bit more. Right, the green. I'm going to use olive green yellowish. I think this might have a new name now, so I'll just list the colour number so that you can 
easily tell which one it is. I'm just going to go over that middle bit. Actually, I'll go over the whole eye. And then it's like a a brownie colour. Um, I'm going to use green umber, and I'm just going to go around the edges, the outer part of the eye. like shading in the direction of the center like going around the edge like this sometimes it can be quite hard to tell what color goes where like you might not be able to tell the green in the middle of this eye but what I do is I sometimes use Photoshop and the eyedropper tool and I just click on the different parts that I'm not too sure what the colour is and then it sort of comes up in a little square it shows you the colour if you'd like me to do a tutorial on that then let me know trying to blend it in a bit now starting to take shape a bit I'm just gonna go over with the green again but a bit, a bit darker in this corner corner as well. I'm going to use sky blue. It's like a nice, well, sky coloured blue. And then just put that really lightly over that highlight. Okay, and then I'm just going to use dark sepia again and just go over the darker bits that I can see. There's actually a darker bit here. And here. Okay, I'm just going to sharpen it. And then I'm just going to connect these bits. There we go. Right. And then 
this bit here has got like a bit of brown in it so I'm just going to use that one go to and just go over a bit and then I'm going to use burn umber and fill it in still leaving that um, white bit there And if you can, try and leave that highlight there as well. Okay. Now I'm just going to use black just to darken all those bits that we've done around the edges. makes it look a bit more lifelike I'm just going to go over this bit a little bit as well. Right. Now I'm going to start doing this lower eyelid bit. And it looks like there's a bit of warm grey and cold grey underneath it so if you just rub out the pencil line and get cold grey too and just do a little base layer press on relatively hard and just draw the darker bit that you can see a bit warmer here but uh, might just do the whole thing cold grey <laughs> okay Then I'm going to use dark sepia again, wherever I've put it, there it is, and draw some little strokes just in the same direction, in the same sort of diagonal down this part. When I'm doing little strokes like this, I often go like down two, up one like down up and I feel like that just creates a more natural looking hair stroke I'll show you again when we do another part of the fur um, so I'm also just gonna use ivory and extend that base careful not to like overlap them because it does go a bit of a weird colour it just means that 
when we do the first strokes it'll be easier to blend it all together. Oh, by the way, it's good to use like a piece of tracing paper or plain printed paper or whatever just to rest your hand on and then you don't smudge the pencil that you've already done because it can be annoying when that happens. Okay. And then I'm going to use mm, I'm going to use Bista, I think. Mm, actually, no. I'm going to use Burnt Orca. So I'm going to use Burnt Orca and just start doing some little hair strokes here below the eyelid. So just doing tiny little strokes like this. Don't press on too hard for this bit. Just keep doing it until it looks pretty, pretty blended. Sorry, the camera just cut out. Um, yeah, just keep doing it until it looks pretty blended around here. And then I'm just gonna use dark sepia again and I'm going to start making this bit darker So I just go like down a bit and then back up just really lightly and then it just creates like really natural hair strokes. I hope that makes sense. And I'm doing it from the inner part of this eyelid like that, just so that it looks a bit more rounded. If you look at the reference picture, the hairs are really tiny around the eyes. 
so I'm just doing like tiny little flicks like that and then I think we'll start on this bit so if you just erase those lines again and I'll just use ivory as a base and I'll just use burnt ochre again just to do that first layer of mapping out the fur direction As you can see it goes in sort of like a, a fan shape so you just have to make sure that you're always looking at the picture and then I'll do the same thing on this bit as well rub it out but you can keep that pencil line really thin if you want to be able to see but yeah let me know if you like the format of this tutorial obviously I don't want it to be really boring because I'm not talking a lot but I don't want to make it like annoying if I'm just chatting rubbish all the way through I might speed a few bits up if it's like really repetitive obviously I don't want it to be like two hours long <laughs> also let me know if you're new to drawing animals or anything if this is your first time doing a pet portrait I thought it would be better to do like a full dog from start to finish rather than just loads of studies from different animals because you'll get a better like sense of achievement once you've drawn the whole thing and I'll, I'll upload as regularly as I can for the next parts so using burnt ochre, burnt ochre? Yeah, burnt ochre and I'm just gonna map out that shape of the fold here. Just gonna do some lighter hair strokes just on this bit here.
I might not have to use any luminance in this actually. It might be okay. But if I do, um, you can buy the luminance, well you can buy the polychromos and the luminance individually. So if you don't have a full set and you still want to do this tutorial, you, I'll put links to where you can get them individually, if that's any better. Right, so I'm just going to actually use burnt umber and add a bit more of a brown tone in here. And I'm going to start doing little hairs up here as well. And just there and and a few just on this bit as well. dark sepia, same thing, just go over it, gradually like darkening it up and building a bit of depth. They don't all go in the same direction here, some of them might come down a bit, some of them go up. So you're just sort of varying the strokes. And I'm just going to add a bit more burnt orchid to this bit. Pressing on a bit harder. more to the bottom.
بر I think I'm just gonna darken this eyelid a bit. So I'm gonna use cold grey V or five I think it is. Um let me just find it. Yeah, cold grey V. And I'm just gonna go over that inner part. gonna do a little bit here and I'm just gonna rub that little patch out and just extend the eye a little bit. And I'm going to use burnt ochre again. Just gonna do these little lines that go in the opposite direction. just bringing these two parts together so that they meet same again at this bit and then I'm gonna use dark sepia and just going to do some more little strokes to blend this bit all together. Burnt umber again, just think it needs a bit of warmth. And I need my burnt ochre here. That's better. It's literally like just building loads and loads of layers to get a pet portrait to look good. 
you literally just need to keep going back over with the same colours like over and over again. Okay. Um, a bit more burnt umber. And a bit more dark sepia. Pressing on quite hard now. go right I'm happy with that so far actually it's gonna add a few more dark sepia strokes to this bit right that'll do for now so we'll start on this eye next literally the same process again sharpen my pencil pretty much the same process go around the outline using dark sepia Hopefully that'll make a bit of difference and the light won't keep going funny. So I'll just carry on with outlining in dark sepia. This eye is a lot smaller because of the perspective of the photo so it won't take too long. leave it at that for now and I'm just gonna use warm grey too again exactly like the other eye just gonna rub that inside out a bit And avoiding that um, blue toned highlight. And then the green. Uh, 
and then I'm going to use dark sepia again I'd probably say that's my favourite pencil because I use it so much I'm just drawing in this little squiggly shape here the best way to get better at pet portraits is to not look at it as like a big piece just look at the small shapes and just copy them like that and then I'm going to use burnt umber again and just draw in more towards the centre of this eye like that and then around the outer corner inner corner rather and I'm just doing that shade in towards the eye again around the outside is <laughs> there we go then I'm just going to use dark sepia again I'm just going to darken this bit up And then I'm going to use that blue again, that sky blue, for the highlights. Sorry if you can hear that weird noise, I have no idea what that is. It's like the room's rattling. <laughs> really lightly. Actually, I'm just going to put a bit more blue here as well. There we go. And then same again with the bottom eyelid, cold grey to just gonna rub this line out. And I'm just gonna go and put a little base coat down. Oh, I've used cold grey three. No wonder it looks dark. Doesn't really matter. It's not really made much difference, to be honest. And then ivory. The eyes are my absolute favourite part of a pet portrait to draw. Just love them trying to make them look realistic and add personality to them. Then I'm going to use Brent Orca and just start adding a few hair strokes. looks really weird until you've done like the last few layers like 
a lot of people call it the ugly phase. Like this, definitely the ugly phase. Then I'm just going to use burnt umber to kind of like deepen this bit. again um yeah burnt umber yeah dark sepia just to darken that up. Sorry the lighting keeps going really funny. It's like every time I put my hand there it goes really bright. So yeah, sorry about that. sepia here, little hair strokes again, and then I'm just gonna put some ivory around here because it's annoying me that that's still pencil. Some people like to use brushes to like brush the little bits away. I really need to get one because you can end up smudging the lines a little bit, especially if it's like a dark colour like dark sepia or black. So I need, definitely need to do that. Just following the shape of that top lid.
there we go it's starting to come in to come together a bit now i'm just going to do some burnt ochre nearer the dark sepia And then I'm going to use burnt umber again. Do some little tiny little hairs here. Cold grey furry again. Missed a bit there. There. And then dark sepia. bit of burnt umber again to miss out a part rub that line out a bit and just bring the colour to, to that line burnt ochre There we go. It's starting to look a lot better. Okay. So the eyes are almost done now. Oh, I've just realised I've not gone over this bit in black.
looking better. Right. And that is the first part of the tutorial complete. So next time we'll be drawing the nose. So make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss that. Um, I have to apologise for the lighting going a bit funny during that video. I just watched some of the clips back and I could see that there was a bit of shadowing and it kept going really bright then really dark. So I'll try and fix that for the next one. So sorry about that. Um, make sure if you do try this tutorial out to tag me on social media or send me a picture or whatever it is and if you have any questions then please do comment below and yeah thank you for watching